Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are keeping well. So today I am here to start with the chapter number 6 of history and the name of this chapter is Towns, Traders and Craftsmen. So get the ball rolling. Varieties of urban centers, cities, types of urban centers, growth of trading class, case studies. History terms, impetus, boost to something, burgeoning, ever growing, pilgrimage, travel to a holy place, chains, a type of dyed cotton cloth, varieties of urban centers, varieties of urban centers, cities. The discovery of agriculture prompted early men to settle near his fields. Thus was laid the foundation of villages. When more and more people began to settle in these villages, gradually many of these developed into towns. With the passage of time, due to the activities of the rulers, religious persons, craftsmen and traders, some of these towns flourished. They flourished as court towns or capitals, some as pilgrimage centers, some as port cities, and some others as trading towns and cities. Some of these towns were founded by different ruling dynasties while others grew themselves. As a result of the trading activities, not only this, some of these towns were ravaged by the Venetians of nature or invaders while others continue to flourish and we can see them even today. Let us try to analyze different categories of these towns and cities and trace the origin of some other towns. Before this, let's connect to history. A town is commonly defined as a living place where people, instead of farming, are engaged in different types of activities to earn their livelihood. Now, types of urban centers, court towns or capitals. Rulers built new cities as their capitals and rebuilt old ones. The administrative capitals of the Delhi Sultans and Mughal emperors like Agra, Delhi and Lahore grew into thriving cities. New towns were founded by the Delhi Sultans, their nobles and the rulers of provincial dynasties. Delhi itself was transformed several times from Shiri to Tughlaqabad to Shah Jahanabad to become the most imposing capital in the east. Muhammad bin Tughlaq built his new capital at Daulatbad in 1327 CE. Firoshah Tughlaq built many cities including Firoshah Kotla in Delhi, Firozabad and Jaunpur 1359 CE. Akbar built Fatehpur Sikri near Agra and built a fort at Allahabad, Prayag near Banaras now Varanasi. The capitals of regional kingdoms also grew into important urban centers like Ahmedabad in Gujarat built by Sultan Ahmad Shah in 1411 CE and Vijayanagar Hampi pilgrimage centers. Some of the towns developed as pilgrimage centers. The chief among them are Kurukshetra, Sachi, Sarnath, Bodhgaya, Haridwar, Badrinath, Kidarnath, Mathura, Elabad, Banaras, Jagannathpuri, Bhubneshwar, Dwarkapuri, Shrigeri, Delhi, Fatehpur Sikri, Ajmer, Nankana Sahib, Amritsar, and Patna, etc. Commercial towns. Commercial towns developed along important trade routes. Gradually, these commercial towns were linked by roads. Shesha Suri repaired the ancient imperial road which connected Sunargaon near Dhaka to Peshawar in the northwest. Many of the sarais built along the road became commercial towns. Later, the Mughal emperor Jahangir and his successors allowed the European traders to establish trading settlements at places like Surat, Bombay, Pondicherry, Madras, Calcutta, and Masuli Patnam. Gradually, they developed into thriving commercial towns. Port towns. Since India developed overseas trade with Southeast Asia, 
वेस्ट एशिया चाइना एंड यूरोप पोर्ट टाउन्स लाइक सूरत ब्रॉच एंड कैम्बे इन गुजरात कैलिकट एंड कोचीन इन केरला मसूली पटनम इन आंध्र प्रदेश एंड सुनार गांव एंड चित्तागोंग इन बंगाल कैटर टू फॉरेन ट्रेड नाउ स्टूडेंट इट्स टाइम टू कनेक्ट टू हिस्ट्री Since trader had to pass through many kingdoms and forests, they formed guilds to protect their interest. There were several such guilds in South India from eighth century onwards. The most famous being Nana Desi and Manigramam. Trading towns. Almost all foreign travelers like Vasav. Yalrut, Idrisi, Marco Polo, etc., confirmed that Indian merchants were very busy in inland and sea route trade. They went to western countries in China through the new land routes, while through the sea routes they visited Arabian, African, and European countries on the west and southeastern countries in the east. as such a large number of trading towns also came up among them the most important were those of multan lahore delhi agra fatehpur sikri patna dhaka anhilwada champaran and surat all in gujarat balasara odisha buranpur in the west tamralipti bengal Ahmedabad, Masuli Patnam, Rajmabad in the east, Ahmedanagar, Goa, Daman Diu, etc. Growth of trading class, traders and craftsmen. Both the traders and craftsmen have a great part to play in the economic activities of the country. Indian craftsmen were perfect masters in producing articles of different kinds and that too in good quality. they were perfect masters in the field of textile industry and their cotton woolen and silk cloth had no comparison in the world indian craftsmen had great mastery over the manufacture of both silk and leather goods the art of making metals was pursued with great success during the period 800 to 177 Both the iron smiths and gold smiths produced the most fascinating quality. The Indian traders took these manufactured goods as well as agricultural goods like spices to distant land and help India to become rich. Scholar says that the present-day town of Tamluk in West Bengal is the site of Tamralipti. The present town is located on the banks of the Roop Narayan River close to where it flows into the Bay of Bengal. Both the Indian craftsmen and traders had organized themselves into their own guilds which not only helped them in times of need but also helped them to produce different articles of good quality so that no country could match them in the field of internal and external trade. Case studies Hampi the capital city of Vijayanagara empire was known as Vijayanagara in medieval times it is today a part of Karnataka state and is known as Hampi it is located in the Krishna Tungabhadra basin the Vijayanagara empire was founded in the 1336 and lasted for almost 200 years The ruins of the city reveal that it was a fortified city. In the construction of the fort walls, wedging technique by interlocking the locks together was used. No cement or mortar was used. The splendid architecture of Hampi has been praised by many travelers. It was studded with many temples, forts and palaces. The buildings in the royal complex had used arcs, domes and pillar halls. There were niches on the walls for holding sculptures. The members of the royal family and many rich people had their residences in garden complexes and orchards. They contained sculptural motifs such as the lotus and corbels. 
The empire had its own fleet of ships. Besides coastal trade, inland trade also prospered. A Muslim scholar, Abdul Razak, noted that there were about 300 ports including the port of Calicut on west coast which maintained trade links with the countries of Abyssinia, Portugal, South Africa, Arabia, Persia, Malaya and China. It has been said about Humpy, if dreams were made out of stone, it would be Humpy. Humpy is full of surprises like the king's balance where kings were weighed against grain, goods or money, which was then distributed to the poor. Abdul Razak, while writing about the famous ruler of Vijayanagara, Krishnadeva Raya says that trade had greatly filled the treasury of the empire. The Vijayanagar rulers also ruled over Goa for about 100 years and had built many ports along the stretch of west coast in 1469. The Vijayanagar city was totally devastated and destroyed. The ruins lay scattered over an area of 26 km approximately. Now, Masuli Patnam. Masuli Patnam, also known as Machili Patnam, gets its name from a gateway to the city decorated with the eyes of fish, Machili. It was founded in the 14th century by the Arabs. Masuli Patnam was a port from where the French, British and Dutch traded during the 17th century. It was prime production centers of fine chins, which was much in demand in the Southeast Asian markets. A royal order from the Qutub Shahi ruler permitted the Dutch to establish a factory at Masuli Patnam. Situated in the Bay of Bengal, Masuli Patnam is the administrative center of the Krishna district in the state of Andhra Pradesh. This town is a railway terminus and an important educational center. This port city is known as for its fishing trade, carpet weaving industry and for scientific instruments. Other products including agricultural produce of India. Masuli Patnam was and even today is famous for its Kalamkari art. This Kalamkari technique derives its name from the Russian word Kalam or a pen-like tool used to draw outlines on the cloth and kari means work. The Kalamkari meant the work done by Kalam. In its heyday, the sport used to handle export of different items weighing more than 2.7 lakh tons and imports of 37,000 tons. Surat Surat was an important port and trading town during the Mughal period. It was the gateway for trade with West Asia via the Gulf of Ormes. It was famous for all kinds of cotton textiles. Fine cotton textiles with zari borders were exported to markets in West Asia and Europe. In the 17th century, the Portuguese, Dutch and English had their factories and warehouses at Surat. According to the English chronicler Ovington, on an average, a hundred ships of different countries could be found anchored at the port at any given time. In 1573, the Portuguese traveler Duarte Barbosa described Surat as an important seaport frequented by many ships from Malabar and various parts of the world. During the reign of Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jaha, Surat rose to become a chief commercial city of India. As a major port of the west coast of India, Surat also served as a port for Hajj to Makkah. In 1664, the Maratha king Shivaji attacked Surat as it was a Mughal power center and a wealthy port town which generated a million rupee in taxes. The prosperity of Surat received a fatal blow when Bombay was ceded to the British as part of the dowry for Catherine of Brangaza's wedding to Charles II in 1662. 
Surat was scared again by Shivaji in 1670. By 1687, the British East Indian Company have moved the presidency to Bombay. The British took control of Surat again in 1759. It is also known as the diamond capital of the world. 92% of the world's diamond are cut and polished in Surat. Connect to history. In 1498, a Portuguese navigator named Vasco da Gama reached Calicut, a coastal city located at the southernmost strip of the Indian subcontinent. His long voyage from Portugal to India, which took several months, marked the discovery of the sea route linking India and Europe. Soon, the Portuguese built several settlements and controlled many areas in the southern peninsula and the Deccan. Rulers of Gujarat like Bahadur Shah and Mughal Emperor of Shah Jahan tried to expel them but they could not succeed and the basis of Portuguese establishment thus formed. Now students, it's time to wrap up. Towns in the medieval period flourished as court towns or capital pilgrimage centers. Commercial towns, port towns and trading towns. Court towns of the Mughal period include Agra, Fatehpur Sikri, Delhi and Lahore. Sarnath, Haridwar, Mathura, Dwarkapuri, Ajmer, Amritsar were major pilgrimage centers. The commercial and port towns came into prominence as a result of product produced in that regions or because of nearness of ports and trading centers. Hampi was an important center of the cotton and spice trade. Masuli Patnam was a prime production center of fine chains. For centuries, Surat has been known as the center of trade and textile. So students, it's time to take your leave. We'll meet in the next class. Bye.